Hello, my name is Todd Baginski. My team and I helped develop the Shoutouts Power App for Microsoft that you'll find in the App Template Gallery. I'm walking through different parts of the Power Apps that we created to point out some of the neat things that we did along the way that you can do in your development too as you develop Power Apps. In this video, what I'm going to show you is how you can make different buttons on a screen that change colors and things like that to indicate which one is clicked and how you can use a transparent background rectangle to make it very easy to track the click events for those to navigate between them and set the states that drive the content in your page. So I'm going to start here with the Shoutouts app. This is the view of the app where I'm looking at the shoutouts that have been sent to me. You can see I've clicked shoutouts to me and that's why it's highlighted in gray and I can see Alex shot me one shoutout. I can then click here and look at the shoutouts that I've sent to other people on my team. So I sent one to Alex as you can see and Melody and Tim as well. And you'll notice when I clicked between them now we highlighted this in gray as the selected one at the bottom of the page versus when I go back here, now you see we toggle the content and which button has been clicked is easy to tell what's going on. So how do we do that? So let's take this power app out of play mode and go into edit mode here and take a closer look. The key thing to understand is when we are clicking either one of these buttons, we need to swap out what the controls look like so we show which one is highlighted. We can do that by changing colors in many cases, and I'll show you how that's done. And we also need to set a variable that drives which content we see in the gallery. So here is my gallery, and if you'll notice in the items collection, I have an if statement which checks the message filter variable right there. If that message filter is received, then I'm going to go get items from my shout out data source, which is actually an entity in the common data service where the recipient name is equal to the current user's full name. However, if message filter is set to sent, I'm only going to get those items from the shout out entity where the creator name is equal to the current user. So that's how you can see how when I flip back between one and the other, we filter on what's displayed in this gallery. So getting over to the buttons, I've got the shoutouts from me button selected right now. So let's take a look at the group of controls here in the from me section that make that button work. The first thing we have at the very back is the background. Notice here in our fill statement, we say if the same message filter property is sent, then we are going to use this color. Otherwise, we're going to use that color. And those colors represent the dark gray and the light gray that you see below. When we look at the actual image, this is the little uh, image behind it, and we can say here, if the message filter is sent, show this image, otherwise show that image. Both of those images have been uploaded to the Power App, so that's how we reference them. Then we can look at the user icon here. This is actually an icon we inserted from the icon menu in Power Apps and didn't even have to make the graphics. So all we need to do is say if message filter is sent, make it one color, otherwise make it the other. That's how we change it between white and black as you see here. The next thing is the arrow. Here we're going to again use an icon that came built in Power Apps and we're going to set the color to the same color that we're using for the user. That way we don't have to write this if statement twice and if we ever refactor this one to be different colors that arrow will pick that up right off the bat. Finally we have the text here. The text again is something that we flip-flop the colors on and we have another if statement right here that controls it. We could also reference the user image color here as well. I'm just showing you two different ways you can go about it. You can either do the if statement everywhere, or you can reference other controls and just daisy chain all that. Then this is the nice trick. 
the from me transparent control here. What is this? This is actually a rectangle that we create from the insert menu by going up to icon and selecting rectangle. That rectangle, when we click it, is going to set that variable of message filter equal to sent. The rectangle has a fill on it. If we look at the color here, you can see it's transparent. So all it does is lay on top of all those other controls because you can see over on the left here in the control tree, it is the one at the very front. So it's got the highest Z order if you're thinking about this in terms of HTML. So it's just a see-through rectangle and its job is when it gets clicked on, it just toggles that variable message filter, which drives not only the content in the gallery, but the display of this control set as well as the control set here, which makes up this button. So if I come over to the to me button, you see we have the exact same controls doing the exact same thing, looking at the message filter. But on top, we lay another tra transparent rectangle. And this one says message filter is received. So that's a quick illustration of how you can use one property to control not only which data you display in a gallery, but how you can control control state and look and feel in your application, and then how you can lay a transparent rectangle or another shape on top to use your on select event to control it all from one single location.